Show. While this show's on. <laughs> the following program is partially recorded. will be heard in Canada by shortwave in Alaska and the Hawaiian Islands by our armed forces and all theaters of operation in the open western states of the USA. It's the Jack Kirkwood Show. <laughs> put mind over matter. Well, here's the man who couldn't get over what was the matter with his mind, Jack Kirkwood! Thank you, Steve, darling. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Steve, thank you for that steamy introduction. Please don't uh, start the afternoon by telling people how fat I am. Why, every day I do something about my weight. What do you do? I eat like a hog. <laughs> Actually, I like being fat. It saves me money. Now, wait a minute. How could being fat possibly save you money? Well, instead of buying belts, I tuck my pants in between the second and third rolls. <laughs> yeah, Jack, Jack has so many wrinkles on his body that when he walks across the room, he screws himself into the floor. <laughs> Well, Lily Lee, don't knock my figure, Lil. If women can wear a pleated skirt, I guess I can wear a pleated stomach. <laughs> You're silly. No, I'm Kirkwood. Silly is the guy who punched me in the stomach because he always wanted to hit the jackpot. <laughs> oh, Jack, you make me mad. You make me nervous. You make the sandwiches. I'll bring the beer. <laughs> oh, are we going on a picnic? I love picnics. Ah, so do I. But every time I go on a picnic, I get nitching to go home. Nerves? Ants. <laughs> Last time I went on a picnic, someone put the lunch and all the soft drinks right over an ant hill. Those ants carried off everything. Soda pop, too? Yep. But we had our revenge. How? We hid the bottle opener. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. What an imagination. What a story. What a time those ants had biting off those bottle caps. <laughs> did you actually see those ants biting off the bottle caps? Well, no, I didn't. Then how do you know they did? My grocery man told me. Your grocery man? Yeah, the ants told him about it when they brought back the empties. <laughs> Anytime you tell a story about empties, I know you made it up out of your own head. Yeah, my empties. <laughs> now, aren't you sorry you said that? Actually, though, <laughs> I love picnics. What times we used to have. We always wound up the day with a big baseball game. Oh, did someone in the group always bring a baseball and a bat? Well, we never had a baseball and a bat. Well, how'd you play baseball? Then? We had a hard salami and a matzo ball. <laughs> That didn't work too well either, you know. As the game wore on, the salami kept getting shorter and shorter. <laughs> Every batter would take a bite out. In the last half of the ninth inning, I went to bat with a string in my hand. <laughs> and the pitcher wound up and threw the mozzo ball right at me. Did you get a hit? No, I got gas. It hit me right in the mouth and I swallowed it. <laughs> now, last time I was on a picnic, my boyfriend took me for a ride in a canoe. Oh, I used to do that. I used, I used, but not anymore. The canoe tipped over once and I was I ever insulted while I was in the water. How do you mean? Cracks about my physique. Instead of yelling man overboard, they yelled, Thar she blows. <laughs> now I ask you, do I look like a whale? Don't answer that. <laughs> That's what I call a low crack. Low crack. Low crack. How's Mrs. Crack? Well, we split up. Yep. We're getting back together again because she wants lots of children. Mm, I hope you'll be happy living with a house full of cracks. <laughs> do you like children? <laughs> do you like children, Jack? I love children, especially little girls. Between the ages of 21 and 50. <laughs> You're nothing but a wolf. What girl did you go out with last night? Oh, some gal named Christiana Fern. Is she pretty? Uh, in a way. What do you mean, she's pretty in a way? Well, there's somebody standing in the way and you can't see her. She's pretty. <laughs> oh, now you've insulted her. You've criticized her. You've never seen her. <laughs> what does she look like, Jack? All kind of pert. She has a very small nose. Her nose is so tiny that when I first met her, I thought she was breathing through a wart. <laughs> well, if you ask me, she sounds ravishing. Ravishing? Ravishing. 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 
so we leave the enchanting little island of Hobo on the boxcar and head our sturdy little craft into the lagoon. As we cross the lagoon, we become aware of the many sharks who approach our boat with baskets and hand begging food, preferably arms and legs. <laughs> As we attempt to leave the sharks behind by setting our sails to the windward, drifting across the lagoon comes the soft chant of the natives as they bid us fond farewell. <laughs> is on the air with a big story on house painting. And here's your news commentator, Phineas. She gave me the brush off. Deadline. Shoot the color to me, Muller. <laughs> Howdy, folks. <laughs> I'll be back in a wink with some sky, sky blue pink. Vermont. News prize the lid off house painting. Come on, Peter. How do you, folks? Uh, now the spring is well on its way. People are beginning to fix up their houses with new paint, roofs, shrubs. You know what that guy wanted to charge me yet? $1,200. <laughs> no kisses. Yes, sir. Well, sir, we decided to check up on this house painting business, so we sent our star reporter to the little town of Paint Peter, Vermont. <laughs> you see what he can find out. Got to do a character. Well, I reported he hid behind a can of old lacquer and he heard the following conversation. The town's only house painter was an old duffer by the name of J.J. J. Kirkwood. And he sure was a sloppy old... He, he always had a hangover. And, uh, and they uh, mixed the wrong color. He splashed paint all he looked like. Oh, my... Uh, take it away, Rembrandt. Hello, Kirkwood House Painting Service. We'll paint your house from bottom to top, including your aunt, your uncle, your mom, and your pop. Over. Hey, Kirkwood, I just finished that house you sent me to paint, but I, but I wore out a pair of shoes painting it. How do you wear out a pair of shoes painting a house white? It was a house trailer. I painted it all the way to Chicago. <laughs> well, get back here. Oh, Miss Lee, Miss Lee, where are you? I'm mixing up this bucket of paint. Well, be careful not to spill any of it. Don't worry, I've got the lid on. Well, that's all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How do you make a bucket of paint with the lid on? It's easy. If you're inside the bucket like I am. Oh, well. <laughs> well, flip your lid and get out of here. <laughs> Were there any calls for me while I was out? Yes, uh, Mrs. Scrumple calls. Scrumple? Mm-hmm. Oh, she wants you to paint... <laughs> she wants you to paint the interior of her house this afternoon. She said that if you don't think you can do it before five, not to bother. She must have heard how slow you are. Slow? Why, once I get started, there's no stopping me. Say, how did Miss Albert like that job I did on that Chinese modern chair in her kitchen? She's pretty mad about it. Mad about it? Yes, her Chinese cook was sitting on it when you painted it. <laughs> you know, I thought that was kind of strange upholstery at the time. <laughs> Hello, Kirkwood House Painting Service. We'll paint your house in nifty blue. If you've got termites, we'll paint them, too. Over. <laughs> Can you tell me how to make paint thinner? Yeah, well, first you take a quart of turpentine. Turpentine? Won't that kill him? Who's him? My horse. What's a horse got to do with this? Well, his name is Paint, and he's getting too fat for the saddle, and I want to know how to make paint thinner. Oh, my God. Come on, back and do another picture. Judy, come and get him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here I am, Mrs. Scrumple, here. Hi, Mrs. Scrumple. Yeah, how do you do, Mrs. Scrumple? Mm -hmm. you, you look the part, too. What can I do for you? Well, I'm having 
guests in tonight, and I want to know if you can have my house painted in time. Of course, Mrs. Crumple, of course. Are you sure you can get it done on time? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> I've heard you're rather slow. Oh, don't you worry, Mrs. Crumple. Once I get started, there's no stopping me. I'm really a fast painter. You are? Well, I painted the whole Empire State Building in two hours. In two hours? Oh, However, did you manage to paint all of it in that short time? Easy. I stood on the box. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry, Mrs. Crumple. I'll have your house all faced in time for the party. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Crumple. Crumple, you old man. <laughs> hey, Miss Lee, when Doug gets back from Chicago, tell him we have a job to do. He should be here any minute. But he just called from Chicago a little while ago. Is he going to fly back? No, he'll walk. Well, how could he possibly walk from Chicago in ten minutes? Six big steps. <laughs> Hiya, boys. What took you so long? <laughs> well, you're on a speed limit down those small towns. <laughs> well, you got to slow down. Well, now that you're here, we got a job to do out of Mrs. Scrumple's. Oh, no. Yes, yes. No, no, oh, not, yes, yes, yes. not Mrs. Scrumple. Mrs. Scrumple. Oh, yes. Remember the trouble she caused us last time? What kind of trouble, Mr. Kirkwood? Oh, she had us sit around for a week while she went to every paint store on the Atlantic coast looking for a light shade of black paint. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dunn. Let's get out there. Right now. Here already? I see what you mean about those small town speed limits. Sure do eat up the time, don't you? Well, let's go in. You, Mrs. Scrumple, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Rather large for a reception hall, isn't it? Here, Miss Kirkwood. Oh, this sure is a big house. Yeah, kind of goofy too. Yeah. yeah. Look at look at look at the price list on the wall. Price list. Yeah. I have to see. It. Oh, that, that's no that's no price list. <laughs> Not a price list at all. That's a bus schedule. <laughs> bus schedule. Sure. Well, what would buses be doing in here? your question? <laughs> oh, now, Miss Kirkwood. Yeah. I want you to start in this room, and remember, I want everything done by 5 o'clock. Okay, Don, hand me that brush. Let's get to work. <laughs> Miss Kirkwood? Yes? It's almost 5 o'clock. Are you nearly finished? Oh! No. Oh. Why, you hardly painted anything. <laughs> All this time. What do you think, Mrs. Crumble? We've been busy painting a Davenport. The Davenport in the den? No, the one in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kirkwood, most of the guests are already here. What shall I do? Oh, you want a fast job. Huh? Why didn't you say so? Stand back. Here goes. <laughs> All finished. Oh, Mr. Kirkwood, you've painted over everything. The rugs, the drapes, and even my guests are covered in paint. I told you once I got started, nothing would stop me. Well, I'll stop you right now. Hey, put down that gun. Help. <laughs> and no jury will ever convict me either. <laughs> Jack, it's about time. Hmm, so it is. So long, gang. See you tomorrow. So long, everybody. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.